Roller launch. Yes. Big deal. So is this your first time at Abbey Road? First time at Abbey Road, and also I'm pretty much a roller newbie as well. So this has been a mega experience for me. <laughs> so you performed earlier, and you were kind of doing the whole doorless jam thing. What were yeah. you? What were you using live? Because in, in the weird video edit scenario mm. I wasn't here for your actual performance because yeah. you were at a different event and now yeah. we've met and then we're going to cut that in so you can tell so you can tell us the context yeah of course so yeah I was performing completely doorless I was using the brand new MC707 groove box ah, okay. which obviously has like the clip based workflow and yeah it's got the drum tracks tone tracks audio tracks which is amazing you can set your bar length all that is really super cool uh, System 8 um, I was triggering uh, uh, MIDI, playing MIDI into the groove box and then sending that back to the System 8. Right. So that was really cool. And you could do that. You could also send the MIDI from the groove box to any into, uh, other external device, like the VT4, which is the vocal effects you, Do you use that a bunch? Because, I mean, you yeah. sing, obviously. Just got and it, and I love it. It's really cool. It's a proper nifty little thing. Excellent. Quite small. And, um, you know, it's got it's got four different types of reverbs, harmonizer. You can harmonize using vocoder or a key. Yes, great, that little thing is. And I was also using the MX-1. So just to summarise, because that was a lot of chatting, um, MX-1, VT4, System 8, MC-707. Because your primary kind of live gig, you know, your gig setup is mm. based around laptop and Ableton Live yeah. and whatnot. So yeah. did you have to kind of make massive adjustments? I mean, you, you know, because as a performer, you know, mm. it's always like, way well, here we go. Um, but you need to prepare, you know, you need to be confident. And Super th- adjustments, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, like mad mad different for me and you know I was quite skeptical I was like hmm am I gonna be able to do this am I gonna be able to do my vocal effects am I and what's really surprised me is that I've been able to meet all my performer needs without a computer so very it's been pretty fun do you think that's a thing then is that a thing that does that make your life easier do you just feel like oh Christ I don't have to carry a laptop I don't have to worry about all of that stuff I can leave it at the hotel Um, does that it was really nice actually it was really nice not to have to like fiddle with sound card laptop um, ins and outs DIs it was actually pretty simple we had the system 8 going straight into the MX1 via you know Ira Link yeah which is what the hell that's the USB thing isn't it yeah and it's just nuts like so that goes in Ira Link and then we got um, 707 also going in Ira Link and then I've got my VT4 going in just uh, you know quarter inch jack cable but then I'm sending to front of house because I've got my own little mixer yeah. stereo pair so you was that's the, mad for yeah. me you know I'm usually sending out like five lines so dry right. vocal uh, wh- um, vocal effects vocal loops and clips on the laptop so in some ways the responsibility is less because you don't have so much to worry about on stage but it's also greater because you have to mix your own gig kind of yes and actually before we began I was like ooh I need to what because when I was rehearsing vocals were a bit dry vocals were too loud arrived here at the space uh, vocals are too quiet and it's too wet <laughs> so you have to kind of accommodate for the space I mean like in real life you know we'd have like um, somebody out front would be somebody out front yeah, who yeah, would yeah. you know perhaps come back and so yeah this, it's obviously different it's like a different workflow but it's very inspiring and it makes your brain kind of slightly switch to another side well because I mean you do like live looping live and build up looping. stuff I mean and that's yeah. really about muscle memory I mean yeah. do, that must have been kind of scary because obviously you haven't got the same muscle memory that you've got with the system you've been using for however long. Exactly. I built the show and how I perform live now over years. So, you know, and there's loads of little tiny things, MIDI mapping, everything. And that's why it's really, there's never been anything that's been able to challenge or make me think twice about ever not using a laptop. But it was nice today to actually perform a song without a laptop. It's interesting. So do you, do you think, I mean, because we've done a couple of interviews with uh, loopers yeah. uh, uh, and people who do looping stuff and particularly um, uh, female girl loopers yeah. seem to be really it's the, it's the classic multitasking thing yeah. do you, but do you think that yeah. it's easier does it, does it make it easier when you're working with purely hardware and not having to deal with any of the, the software stuff or, or are you thinking actually it would be so easy for me to do this in Ableton or whatever that's a good thought that's a good point do you know what it's a different workflow Yeah. it's quite nice not having a computer it's just yeah. like it limits you you're like this is what you got these are your effects so it's quite it's different I, I would say you know to compare them outright is 
it's not, you can't really. No. They're just different. I guess it's how much of your brain is left for enjoying the moment, for improvising within that, and kind of, you know, not thinking, okay, my hand needs to be over here to turn this knob because this is section. There was still a lot of that tonight. So I was still doing, I st- it still felt similar because I'm still playing chords. My right, I'm doing um, vocal effects with the MX1. Um, you know, they've got yeah. loads of cool effects on that thing. Like, that's really an amazing piece of gear. Um, I'm, I'm changing presets on the VT4, maybe right. switching to a harmonizer, switching to a different reverb. Which is quite similar in terms of the multitask vibe. Um, and I wish I could have been a little bit more slick, but I haven't had as much time as yeah, I wanted yeah. to. But, to I mean, do I it. suppose the thing is, because, I mean, that, like you say, that stuff takes. You know, years Long of muscle time. memory, yeah. Yeah. and then that gives you confidence, doesn't it? Because yeah. the confidence to be able to perform, knowing it's gonna. Hundred percent. And do you know what? You're so right. Like today, now when I turned up to perform this, I was pretty nervous. I always get nervous, but I just knew that because of my experience with performing, with looping and, and technology, I was a lot more chilled. Like the first thing I did with Ableton in terms of like a corporate performance, I remember like triggering scenes was like. Oh my god, it was just my fingers were shaking, you know? <laughs> Whereas today he was like, oh, it's okay, it's kind of, it's familiar, you know? Sure, but I, I mean, to be honest, fair play also, I'd imagine some of this firmware's beta, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yes, like... I mean, that's like, you know, we, brave business. So basically Monday, uh, there was a few things, and I was just like, oh, cool. But the guys at Roller, they're so great. And um, I was on the phone to Dan, who we've been working together, and David Lund as well, and he's like, mate, can you just turn on the turn on the device? Can you just tell me what the firm, you know, what number is this, what device? And I was on like 072 but it was 103 I needed to upgrade my firmware to and then that was like changed loads of stuff oh, so wow. yeah so that's scary but also better st- well. scary but good but then different things but then um, you know the way I see it is like it's all it's great for your brain isn't it it's a workout for your brain but at the end of the day it just makes me more knowledgeable about technology right. and um, you know posting kind of tutorials bits and bobs like on YouTube and also teaching as well production well, the, as many skills as I can acquire the better you know and the more things I could share with my audience to inspire them to create music and feel the joy that I get from making music well yeah that's right uh, we have to apologise there's all this of, people are playing this kind of John Lennon like imagine piano that's like, hanging around down the bottom it's old piano old Steinway thing I don't mean that's the piano, that's something else. That's that someone, sounds like a shredder. That sounds like a shredder or a pneumatic drill. Sam- We're probably going to have to wrap things up. Um, Sample so that, isn't it? Where can people find your stuff? Yeah, so I'm just, actually, there's a funny story to my YouTube channel. Just type in Rachel K. Collier. And, uh, yeah, there's obviously lots of performances on there, Ableton performances. You know, gear, kind of little bits of gear reviews, production tutorials. And my Instagram is just Rachel K. Collier as well. Spotify or Rachel K. Collier or RKC. Nice branding. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> and uh, YouTube is actually funny. When I was trying to do my, like, domain name, I pressed return too quick. So it's actually Rachel, Rachel K. Collier off. It's quite Russian. I didn't get to finish official. <laughs> so um, that is my domain for YouTube. But you know what? Just type in Rachel K. Collier and um, hopefully I'll appear. Excellent, thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you very much, really good to meet you guys.